On this week's episode, we go whale watching in Iceland. We talk to Thomas Heaton about landscape photography, and we eat the world's greatest hot dog. One, two, three, listen. I'm Taylor Jackson, and I'm a wedding photographer from Canada. Last year, I failed to complete the 120 ounce steak challenge at Brand Steakhouse in Las Vegas, and I've been sad ever since. <laughs> Out here on a whale watching tour. Uh, I've never actually seen a whale in real life and I'm hoping that we see one today. I apparently have a pretty good success rate uh, out in this area of the world as well as dolphins uh, which is pretty cool. My plan of attack is basically to stay as close to the water as possible, have the polarizer on there to get rid of all the glare. Uh, it, the ocean just looks like glass today uh, so we'll definitely see anything if it pops up but I figure it's better to just kind of pick a small area and focus on that than running all around the boat and trying to do all kinds of different things uh, because I feel like that's how uh, you just do too much, do less. So our old strategy looking at the side of the boat is wrong because the guys up top here on the bridge have binoculars and they have radios to contact the other boats. We should be looking wherever they're looking. And right now, we're headed to some dolphins, hopefully grab a few photos. The only mistake that I made on this trip was bringing the 28 to 300 zoom lens with me. It's great to have all that zoom range, but the quality isn't the best, unfortunately. I would not recommend bringing a super zoom on a once in a lifetime trip. I'm sure they'll tell us when there's uh, whales. We can probably just chill inside and tell them. I actually almost forgot that we were on a whale tour. I was just taking pictures of the water for so long. Um, and that was rewarding enough. It's just nice to be out on a boat. I don't even care if we see any whales. The trick to actually seeing whales on a whale tour is to stop caring about seeing whales and then all of them will instantly appear. Whale watching. Complete. Uh, I think we got really lucky. We saw a lot of wildlife. Uh, really good time. I would have been happy just to be out here on the water and just uh, enjoying the day. If there's anything I know about whales is that they uh, make your day better, unless you're a fish, in which case uh, they might ruin your day. Fish. Hotels are great and all, but on Airbnb you can find some incredible places in the most scenic locations for less money than you could ever expect to pay. Even though it looks really nice, it doesn't really photograph as well as it looks, which is something that I run into pretty often. We'll have a look when we get back to the computer, but for now uh, I don't think that this shot really kind of encapsulates what we're actually seeing. So sometimes it's better just to experience it uh, rather than spend an hour doing different combinations of lenses and filters and things like that to try to get a shot when maybe it's just an experience to have and not a photograph. We were fortunate enough to sit down with Thomas Heaton, who is happy to talk to us a little bit more about his experiences as a photographer in Iceland. I love Iceland. I've been to Iceland three times in three years and I'm going back again in a few months. It's just Phenomenal. It's a really, really top location. Very popular now, but still totally worth going. The problem, I guess, with Iceland is, is it's a victim of its own success. So a lot of photographers now are a bit snobbish. <laughs> uh, a lot of people make jokes about Iceland because it's so popular. Um, and it's a shame because it is incredibly popular and well visited and well photographed. But that should never, ever take away the enjoyment and the feeling you get when you capture a gorgeous image. Who cares if it's been photographed 50,000 times that week already? Who cares? Go and experience the landscape for yourself and don't let some arrogant photographer put you down by saying, oh, Iceland, everyone goes to Iceland. You know, no, that idiot. That's what they are. Stupid people, go to Iceland, enjoy it, go for yourself. Don't go to try and get respect from your peers. 
go and enjoy it because you will. You'll have a fantastic time. We're here in Reykjavik and we haven't eaten all day because we knew that we were coming here to do the best hot dog in all of Europe and a reindeer hamburger. You might recognize this place from season one of the show, uh, but that is because it was the best thing that I did in all of season one of the show uh, was eat this hot dog. And I've been dreaming of it since last year. So I'm hoping it lives up to these unreasonable expectations that I've uh, put on it in my mind over the past year. The hot dog is the national food of Iceland, probably. I put my hot dog socks on today just for, uh, for this moment here. It's a very good hot dog. Looks a little more feminine than I anticipated, but I am comfortable enough to drink this cider. I am allergic to barley, uh, wheat, and yeast. Uh, so I cannot drink traditional beer. So I have to drink this uh, it's fruit beer. I hope that means it's not made with things I'm allergic to. Water, malted barley. That's good. This isn't cider at all. Yours just looks like... Black death. Like that is Black Death right there. Best hot dog, best burger. Which is better? On a 10 point scale, that hot dog I believe is like a 9.8. Um, I would say this burger is also at least a 9.5. On next week's episode, we see some blue water, ride some horses, and eat some bread that was cooked in the center of the earth. 